What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out a title called Wayward. They just released another big giant patch for this one, and I realized it's been a couple of years since I covered it last, so here we are. If you've never seen Wayward before, Wayward is probably, in my opinion, when it comes to hardcore survival RPGs or hardcore survival roguelikes, Wayward is more than likely kind of like in the number two spot in some ways and in the number one spot in some ways. Kind of depends what you would prefer from your gameplay. But in the case of me personally, this is a game that is the tiniest, just has, it's like Unreal World, but with a little bit of sugar added to it. You know what I mean? Just to give it a little bit of that sweetness, just to give it a little bit of that mouthfeel in order to make it a little bit more palatable. Uh, it's Unreal World, except they've smoothed over a lot of things with some quality of life and also a little bit more quick of a pace. And so this is a game where you are a little guy who is marooned on an island. And it's up to you what you want to do from there. This incorporates all kinds of real world skills like woodworking and tailoring and weaving and farming and chemistry. And so really it's up to you the way that you want to advance to the game and what skills you want to develop in order to win. The ultimate goal of the game is to sail around the game world. That's right, there's multiple areas and you can sail around them on your boat, which you can build from scratch. In fact, we're probably going to build a boat here today more than likely would be my guess. But once we get the boat built, you can sail around the map and the goal is to find six golden treasures. Once you find six golden treasures, you are allowed to escape what is effectively this game's equivalent of sort of like a Bermuda Triangle, like you're trapped in sort of this alternate survival dimension, and until you find those six pirate treasures, you can't get out of here. And you're gonna be making armor and weapons along the way. I've made, I mean, I'm gonna give you the grand tour of my base in just a second. I just got attacked by a spider that's the size of a Volkswagen. So you're gonna have to give me a second. We're fairly well equipped right now. I realize that every single time that I've covered this game, I've only been between like, brand new fresh spawn and 30 minutes into the game and so I figured I'd give you a look at what a playthrough looks like when it's like I don't know six or seven hours into the game I've been playing this pretty solidly over the course of the last weekend but before we get to the grand tour of my base and the facilities and the island and what it is we're going to be working on here today and maybe some tips for new players to the game of wayward if you wanted to get the title for yourself it's down below in the description. Now, the game says it's in early access, but honestly, this has been a feature complete title probably for three or four years. Like, I think this game actually kind of, like, finished its victory criteria in, like, 2018 or 2019, where you could actually, like, play and win the game. And it had all the content from there in between as well. However, the developer, this always strikes me as being a little bit of a passion project. And so, like, if you've ever been a fan of something like Dwarf Fortress, or you've been a fan of something like Cataclysm DDA, or the previously mentioned Unreal World, this game is kind of like that. Like, this game has been a browser game since, God, I don't even know when. It didn't release on Steam till like, 2016 or 2017. But I've been covering it pretty much every year since. This is one of those games that's got a lot of mileage on the dashboard at this point, and the developer continues to just add more things to it, and the reason we're covering the game is because more stuff just got added to it with the beacon update. And since the last time I've played, there's been a complete overhaul of the UI, everything feels much more slick and modern. But for right now, let's take a walk through my base and we'll talk about things you need to know about in this game. So top left hand corner, we've got health, we've got energy, we have our food meter, and we have our water meter. These things do level up, they do develop over time. So things like strength, for example, is gonna affect your health when you do activities like mining or chopping trees that have something to do with strength. Your strength will level up, you'll get more HP, you'll get more carrying weight, you'll get more attack power. Uh, you've got your dexterity over here, which is for your stamina when you do activities that increase your stamina, like swimming or whatever. Uh, basically, every activity in this game has an attribute associated with it, either metabolism, uh, dexterity or strength and those all level up through various crafts and various activities that you do in the world passively while you're doing those other things and we've got our attack power we've got our armor right here we've got our carrying weight we've got our reputation uh, the reputation system is probably the one weakness of this game we'll talk about why that is a little bit later on into the video since the last time i covered this game i don't think i was actually doing impressions videos and critiques I think I was just playing for fun the last time I played it, and so one of my major critiques about the game is the the, the morality system, basically. Uh, effectively, this island is sentient, 
And the things you do on this island make your reputation go up or down. So like chopping down trees or like killing animals that are peaceful uh, tends to make your reputation catastrophically drop. Things like planting trees, things like killing monsters, uh, stuff like fishing, and stuff that's sustainable tends to actually increase your reputation. And the world will become more or less hostile depending on how high or how low this number is. Right now, we're like a little bit in the red. I was at like 5,000 before I started recording the video, but a couple of monsters have spawned on me and I've killed them. It self-regulates a little bit, but the reputation system, I think I could do almost an essay on why I think it's probably not the best thing for the game when it comes to incentivizing behaviors and incentivizing playstyles, but that'll be a talk for later. Inventory's up in the top right, equipment's over here, this is our crafting menu. This game has a deceptively huge amount of crafts that you can do inside of it. This game is a Discovery Crafters, uh, effectively, dream game. Uh, this is a game that, on the surface, it seems like it doesn't have a lot going on. But actually, if you get into the game, and you start fiddling around with the crafting, you will find that there are an enormous amount of things you can do in this game, and it's tremendously customizable. So where I'm at right now in the game is I have a little campfire, I've built a storage shed over here, I've got forges, I've got kilns, I've got anvils, I've got desalinators, I've got all the things I need for my basic survival already taken care of. On top of that, I've got this little apple orchard over here that I planted probably day one upon spawning. I found an apple tree, and I ate all the apples to survive my first day, and it gave me a bunch of seeds. So I planted all the seeds in this grid, and it wasn't really that helpful until about six hours later playing the game. And now I effectively have infinite food, and I don't really need to worry about feeding or watering myself anymore. Pretty easy to survive at this junction of the game, just with the apples that spawn off my trees. Other things that I have is I have a little pond over here. This game has a mechanic where when you throw things into water, it spawns animals. And so this little lagoon right here is actually isolated from the ocean, but I've spawned about a million fish inside of it. I've spawned a bunch of sharks inside of it. I, f I farm it whenever I need food that like the apples don't cover. But ever since the orchard came in, the apples more or less cover it. Uh, with where I am in the game right now, I'm actually looking, oh, we spawned another shark too. Good, well if I get hungry, I'll eat another shark. Where I am in the game right now, I'm actually trying to get myself up to the metal tier. At the moment, I've got a whole bunch of stuff that's made out of effectively alligator scale or like snake scale. I've got a bunch of stuff that's made out of leather. This should be good enough gear for the first island. There shouldn't be too many things on the surface that are a direct threat to me at this point. There are some things beneath the surface that are a bit of a threat, but that's largely relegated to demons and pirate ghosts. So for right now, I know, pu -pu -pu pirate ghosts, just in case you wanted to get your, your, your mystery machine on and investigate who's sabotaging the Halloween concert with corn. Uh, but let's see here. We actually need to take a look around and I need to find a supply of talcum powder. Uh, not because I want to keep my nooks and crannies all nice and, you know, dry uh, from the random residual moistures that tend to spawn throughout a busy day. But in this game, you need talcum powder as a flux that you add in order to blacksmith. And so I think this is limestone over here. So lime is not really going to help. Yeah, I need talcum powder. That's tin up there. So that is the ore I need. But prior to the recording of this episode, I actually farmed out all of the tin that I was going to need for the foreseeable future. So we pretty much just need to find talcum powder. So let me take a look around the island. We'll see if we can find it. Oh, look, dude, a little goat. You can tame animals in this game. This game has a large, complicated system in which you are able to tame pretty much every animal in the game. Like, you can tame all kinds of stuff and then use them as battle buddies to attack your foes if you want. I usually don't do too much taming, but some people seem to be really big fans of it on the forum, so more power to them. I don't... I, I like to do things on my own from the shoulder. Hey, we found our talc. It was just a little bit of a turn over to a different spot. So I've got my pickaxe over here, and one of the big things with this game you've got to learn how to do is you've got to learn how to navigate the inventory. Because while the inventory windows are hugely customizable, you can resize them, you can move them wherever you want, they're all modular, this game is pretty complicated. And so, for example, I have a pickaxe over here inside my hotbar. Pickaxe is inside my inventory, 
but if you look at the uses for this pickaxe, this is definitely a roguelike because there's about a million billion things you can do with this pickaxe from offering it to people to like mining to chopping so on and so forth. If you want to choose what default action is going to happen when you face an object and use the pickaxe, you got to right click on it now. This is a new feature. So it used to default back to mining and meleeing was all kind of like one thing. Now you select what you want it to do when you hit this hotkey. And so I've got it set to mining right now, but that's a new feature of the UI that did not exist the last time I was playing the game and it took a little bit of getting used to. I'm going to mine some of my talc. The island is going to be really upset about it, but the island is not going to be able to do a damn thing about it because I'm pretty geared right now for this first island. And so I'm not really too worried about my safety. We are overloaded a little bit, but I think that should be kind of enough talcum powder to maybe make it. Maybe I'll bring I'll bring a bit more back with me. I don't want to underdo it either because I don't want to make the trip back out here. I'm like torpedoing my island reputation right now on the promise of amazing powders to make my butt swish smoothly cheek to cheek when I walk. Ever have that happen, dude? Where like your butt cheeks are so dry and they are so clean. Like it's one of those weird days where the humidity is just right and you get out of the shower and you dry off all your nooks and crannies and all your bits and pieces, right? All your all your bait and tackle. And then like once you're all dried off, there's just like that perfect level of humidity or non-humidity in the air that within like five minutes you dry off completely and your butt cheeks kind of do that very smooth like swish, swish, swish like when you're walking through the house, man. That's like one of life's finest feelings right there. That's like the feeling of effervescent freshness. Uh, this rat wants to fight me, so I'm going to beat him to death real fast. It's going to help my reputation out. If you have a knife, you can butcher this guy to get bits and pieces off of him. So, like, if we put that on our four slot, you can see there we got a claw, we got some fat, we got some, like, infected meat, we got a brain, uh, we got some bone fragments. With the bone fragments, you can turn them into needles. The brains, you can turn it into sinew, which is actually probably what I'll do with it inside my crafting menu. Uh, you can cook up the meats if you wanted to to feed yourself, or if you have multiple meat types and a fire, you can create pemmican, which doesn't rot and it lasts forever. And so I've got like big stacks of pemmican just sort of like laying around in my base. Just in case I ever need it, I don't really need it because of my apple farm, but you know. Uh, there are also forageables. The amount of things that are going to be available to you is going to depend on your map seed. This game is procedurally generated, you never quite know what you're going to get. So some maps are going to be inherently more difficult than others. Like I've had I in the dozens of hours I have in this game from over the years, uh, I've had maps that are utterly unplayable where you just kind of spawn in and die within the first hour of gameplay, just sort of roguelike style because there's nothing to work with. There's not even like bare basic materials to work with on some of the islands. And then I've had other islands like this one, which are very fortuitous and they give you a very amicable start where you've got lots of forageables and there's wild onions. Oh, I ate too much and it nerfed. I didn't even know that was a thing. Huh, you are overeating and lose stamina. That must be new. I don't remember that being a thing either. I just wanted to finish my apple, man. I was just excited. I was excited at, at the prospects of pomaceous fruit, man. That's all, that's all that I wanted is to get my pomation on. Now that we have our talcum powder, the other thing we need to do is we probably want to get the grill going. I got a whole bunch of ash over here. Uh, pick up all the piles of ash so that the people here at home can actually see what the furnace looks like when it's lit. This game is turn-based, in case you were wondering. Uh, is it? You can mouse over this. The fire is almost extinguished. I don't know if I have any like good burnables on me right now. Throwing a bark in here will buy me 80 turns of fire, so I'll go ahead and do that. And then I think we're going to have to, like, chop down a tree, I think. Your skin is raw and inflamed. Did I accidentally light myself on fire? How odd. I don't remember lighting myself on fire. The fire should have been contained to the furnace. But I suppose that's life. I'm going to chop down a tree real quick just so we can get a couple of things to keep this fire going. It says that every 20 turns I'm going to lose health. We'll see how bad it is. 
There we go. Stoke the fire on up. And, oh, it's only two damage. That's not that bad. Uh, we've got a raging fire now. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of our smithing. But, oh, wait. I can't do my smithing because I need a cast mold for my ingots, which I totally forgot about. So let's go ahead and we'll drop off all the talc inside of here. And these are my, I've got all kinds of things in storage. This game has a vibrant enchanting system. Uh, items come in Diablo style qualities. And each like you can have a rock in this game that you find on the ground that is an epic rock. The most remarkable rock you've ever seen. And if you use that remarkable rock with another remarkable rock to sharpen each other, you'll end up with like a legendary quality sharpened rock. And then you can use that legendary quality sharpened rock that's imbued with fire to make like a stone caveman axe that also has fire magic on it. This game has all kinds of customizable crafting, like legitimately getting into actually... So in this game, getting into the process of cultivating your items and getting like the random things that you want out of them, uh, it's, a, it's a big process. What we're gonna need is, I've got a little bit of sand down here. And so I'm gonna need some of this sand because we need to manufacture some better sand. So this is just coarse beach sand right here. Instead, what I'm going to need is I have a mortar and a pestily inside of here. Uh, there it is right there. I found it inside of a dungeon. It's made out of tin, but it'll do. What we want to do is we want to take this sand and we want to turn it into refined sand. So there's our refined sand. We've knocked that out now. And then from the refined sand, we need to make green sand. Uh, which is a special type of flux that we use for creating a mold that can withstand being put inside this furnace. And so in order to do that, I'm actually going to have to dig up a little bit of clay. And I'm going to have to grind it up with the mortar and pestle the exact same way. Now, clay is pretty easy to find. It's this light gray stuff on the ground. And so I'll go ahead and get on in there. And I'm actually just going to harvest this with my hands because I'm lazy. Uh, but don't harvest things with your hands. It can hurt you and make you bleed. I've got lots of resources right now to deal with sort of like a catastrophic arterial hemorrhage, but like a new player is not going to, and it's very easy to kind of die of bleeding and poison in this game when you're early on in your playthrough. Uh, so you'll want to get on top of that. I forgot to mention, I also have a well down here, but they've changed the way that wells work since the last time I played the game, so I'm still getting acclimated with that system. Like, so, so wells have had some balance changes made, and so my well is not quite as effective as I would like it to be by the old rules of the video game. By the new rules, I've got, like, a lot more stuff I need to do in order to make that well, like, infinitely effective. It's going to take a lot of effort, and it's going to take a lot of bad reputation, but it is what it is. Now, we need to make some clay flakes. There they are. So we will flake all that clay. We will make our green sand. There's our green sand, which is now ready for casting into a flux mold. And it looks like we actually lucked out and got some high quality talcum powders too. So when we go to smelt ore, that should be really good for us, actually. When we go to smelt ore, we should get some high quality ingots because we've got these higher quality fluxes over here. That's our granite sand cast flask right there. Uh, you can fail to craft things in this game if your skill is too low. My stone crafting is not super great right now because I haven't really needed to do a lot of crafts that use stone casting, but actually we got really good durability out of that one. So it looks like we can use it 52 times. So we can make 52 ingots with this cast before it falls apart, or I need to repair it with my hammer. A hammer in this game is a universal item that allows you to repair pretty much every item in the game from armor to weapons, you name it. Uh, your granite hammer will fix it back up to full durability at the cost of some of the maximum durability. If you're trying to eke out a lot more usage from some of your stuff, I'm going to go ahead and we will grab all of the tin ores. We will grab some of the high quality talcum powders. Over here, I've got even more ore. So we'll move all that to our inventory. And then I've got even more talcum powder which is really nice. And then we'll take this back on over to the furnace, which hopefully is still burning. And we will be able to make some tin ingots and level up our blacksmithing a little bit. Don't you just love it? Now here's the downside to all this blacksmithing. The island is gonna be really angry at me. The island like hates, like hate, hate, hates it when you blacksmith. 
Like, legitimately, the island is not a fan of you blacksmithing at all. Uh, so, actually, my tongs. I need tongs to work with things inside the flame. My ta Oh, this talcum powder is a talcum powder of aptitude. There you go, that item has a enchantment on it. If you play your cards right, you can actually get these enchantments worked into the things that you're creating. Uh, I haven't really gotten into that system super heavily yet, so I can't describe to you exactly how it works, but it is a thing. I think I have some tongs around somewhere that I can use. Yeah, I do. I got some tin tongs over here that I can use to continue my smelting. And look at that big old stack of ingots, some of them of remarkable quality. So if we were fishing for enchantments and really high quality items, what we would do here is we would kind of throw all these crappy ingots just into the river and just keep the high quality ones. But since I'm recording a YouTube video right now and I'm trying to make some kind of tangible progress, eh, we'll leave it alone. Because our reputation is so bad, we're probably going to get invaded by a lot of monsters tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and get some rest real quick and we'll sleep in my hammock inside my base, and hopefully nothing comes like rap-tap-tapping on my chamber door. But I feel like we should probably be under attack pretty quickly because this has bottomed out my reputation really aggressively. Now, I have a sword, so I've already got that made out of metal. I've got a decent helmet and a decent gorget, and so I kind of need to get, like, a better chest piece... I kind of need to get better gloves, better belt, better legs, better backpack, all that kind of stuff. So, I guess I'll make a plate chest, and that has 73 durability. You love to see it. So this should bring our durability of our, I'm sorry, our defensive score up here up pretty aggressively. How many more ingots do I have left? I got like seven of them. Does seven ingots actually make anything? Seven ingots actually does not make anything. Uh, seven ingots doesn't even get us close. We need basically 12 for each piece of gear. So we're going to have to sort that out at some point. I think I've got more talcum powder, maybe. I do have more talcum powder. I think that's still going to leave me one shy of the amount that I need, though. Oh, the furnace went out. Okay, well, we'll call it a day then. I mean, a chest piece is still a pretty good advance for the day. I'll take it. Okay, so I took the time to dispose of all of the things inside my inventory and store them up and move them around so that they're not clogging us up no more. I'll go ahead and harvest some of my apples over here, too. There we go. Harvested some of my apples. That way we can fill up these meters a little bit because we are going to go on a spelunking adventure. So there is an underworld to this game, much in the same way that in, like, Stardew Valley, there's kind of like an adventuring area. This game has underground caves, and it's inside those underground caves that you're going to find most of the monsters and most of the advanced things you need in order to make the game more interesting. Uh, that's where you're going to find your treasure maps so that you can work on the actual main game objective. You're going to find bosses. You're going to find all kinds of bad stuff deep underneath the actual arena of the game. So watch out for that. Be re Do these guys, are these guys like, do I get reputation for smacking these nerds? Oh no, I lose reputation for killing slimes. Bummer. Well, I'm still going to harvest them so that I can get their little slime gelatin cubes. We can melt those down later to make glue for like repairs and for other things. For right now... Let's find ourselves a good stairway downwards. And we'll see if we can get ourselves into a little bit of trouble. Well, I found an entrance to a cave. Let's go ahead and ignite our torch real fast so that I can see. There's obviously a skeleton right there. I don't know if there's going to be anything else nasty down. What is that? A wooden spear? That doesn't bode well. I mean, somebody else came down here and got schwacked. It looks like I haven't explored this cave yet either. What is that? Oh, it's a coal vein. Oh, there's a zombie over here. Okay, zombie. Let's dance. Mm-hmm. Let's do this thing. Perfect. Uh, that leveled up my parrying skill by quite a bit. I don't know much combat. Oh, we got a shirt, too. Nice. The shirts are good because in this game, making cloth is like a huge pain. And so killing zombies and just, like, looting their clothing makes that whole process, like, a lot easier, gathering cloth for things. Oh, he came back. He's not dead. Look at you over here. All right, I'm going to make sure you stay dead. How about that? You've now been just absolutely... I cut you apart like a psycho, okay? I've buffalo billed you. 
We'll drop that over there. Oh, treasure chest. Nice. Uh, do I have a lockpick on me? I don't know if I have a lockpick on me. I do have a lockpick on me. Good. And we got it open on the first try. We found an ornate cape. That's a new item. Never seen that before. And we found a tattered map. Good. And apparently we found some magical underpants as well. Not magical. They are superior quality underpants. These are the ones that caught, these are the ones that got that extra Amazon star, you know what I mean? Like, normally they're like 3.2 stars, but for whatever reason, this pair of undies has like 4.1 stars, and like the magic really exists inside that extra star. That's like, I only have one brand of shirts I wear now. I don't wear anything that has a company logo on it anymore, if I can help it. I just, I don't like the fact that every shirt has like Adidas or something on it. Don't like it, so I don't wear anything that's branded or has a logo on it. But I found, like, these t-shirts that are hella fluffy and soft. And, like, those are the only ones that I get now. I've been wearing them for a year or two, and I really, really like them. Uh, I'm gonna remove this wall so that I can keep going south. There we go. With the cape. Where does the cape go? Does it go on my back? Oh, it does. Dude, look at- <gasps> Pirate goes, run! Okay, okay. That thing's actually dangerous. Yeah, it's a pirate ghost. I don't know how I want to deal with the pirate ghost. I don't know if he's actually after me. Oh no, he definitely after me. Run. Okay, uh, we need to like cheese it right now. So the pirate ghost, uh, the pirate ghost is basically like a your adventure is over type of monster. Uh, you can, I can handle a lot of stuff down here in the dungeon, but like once a pirate ghost shows up, all bets are kind of off. Like, that, that's pretty much just the way that it goes. You saw he hit me for a third of my HP in one strike. So watch out for pirate ghosts. If you see a pirate ghost, you should run from the pirate ghost. Zombies aren't that bad. They're pretty easy to take down if you've got basic gear. Skeletons, you're probably going to want to be in leather gear before you take a swing at a skeleton because they can still... Ooh, they can still hit pretty hard. What is this? Oh, nice, dude. It's a tomato. Um, I don't want to put slime gelatin on it. I just wanted to eat it right now. Did I get tomato seeds from eating that? I did not get... What does this do? Let's read it. All right, so we're reading a map. And it looks like... Upon a square of gravel, a bounty, a treasure, valuables hid... Away from the island's heart to the southeast, those inclined for thievery forewarned, this treasure be mine lest ye be attacked by the earth. Well, I suppose I'll have to keep an eye out for it. This feature is somewhat unique right here with the two squares and then like a little guy that looks like he's doing half of like the walk like an Egyptian dance. So like, we'll uh, we'll keep an eye out for it. This little X coming off the side of a mountain right here, directly north of that and two steps left is also a good clue. So these are mountains right here. This is water on the in-between, I think. It's kind of hard to say, though. But I think it's either water or dirt. Tough call. I can move around while I have this open, by the way. So the only thing is it loses durability every time you take a step. So, it is plausible that you might lose uh, your, your map. I can only take like 1,300 steps. Now, that's a lot of steps, so chances are it'll be okay. Did that rabbit just an aberrant rabbit? Hell is an aberrant rabbit. It gave me 600 reputation. Uh, aberrant creatures in this game, they are creatures that are overcome with malice for the player because you've done bad things on the island, like mine too much, like we just did. Uh, but he's actually got good food on him. I thought his food... Ooh. Wow. A quadruple enchanted bone fragment. That is super useless. But... Kind of cool. I don't know if I've ever seen anything that has four enchantments on it. So it's got a much higher value than a normal bone fragment. It gives you a much better return if you offer it to someone or something if you're trying to tame them. It's got aptitude on it, which I don't actually know what the aptitude enchantment does. And then it's got a cold enchantment on it as well. 
Huh. Don't see that every day. Like I said, every single item from a rock on up to a sword in this game can be, like, hugely enchanted and, like, incredibly magical. It just sort of... Oh, my God. What did I, I just killed something without even realizing it. Apparently a trapdoor spider, and I one-shotted it. I was looking at a different spot on the screen while I wandered. Because, like, there's not really any threats on this island to me anymore, except for the pirate ghosts. And maybe, like, more than one skeleton. I, I think it would probably get really sketchy if there's more... Oh, I don't want to fight a snake, though. I just need the snake to go away, but he's, like, stuck. Alright, is there anything down in here? Just, like, a dead end? It actually looks like this kind of connects to the spot where I was previously right there. You can sort of see it. If I hammered out this wall right here, we might be able to leapfrog the pirate ghost. Or we could die horribly. Either or. Probably step down to here for a second and drop all that to get my weight down. I'm going to go back up to the surface. There we go. Yeah, I think we leapfrogged the ghost. It's hard to say. Anything good in here? Oh, there's a there's a torch. We can start a fire right there. There's a there's a torch pole stand, like a tiki torch. All right, well, let's keep trucking southwards. I mean, there's probably more. Oh, another tiki torch. Nice. We will start a fire right there. Good. Durability still looks okay on my torch for exploration. Another treasure chest, and a copple. Okay, cool. Copple can be used, I. Th think for glue making I think or like adhesives or something like that gravel tin I was looking for something better down here like iron that's what I really like to find but iron's kind of hard to come by in this game like you gotta really look around to find the iron uh, we've lockpicked this guy we found another ornate cape this one appears to be roughly well it's like slightly better quality than the one we have over there I'll keep it as a replacement for when this one wears out, because it will eventually. Everything in this game wears out eventually. Like, you can only keep bubble gum and, like, duct taping things for so long in this game before they fall apart permanently. So every piece of gear you have on you... Oh, that's super bad. Okay, I want to go this way. There we go. Perfect. That's what I wanted to do. He came down here looking for me, man. This pirate ghost is out for blood. Did he put out the torch, too? I think he did, dude. I think he put out the torch. Huh. Yeah, those pirate ghosts, I like to think about them. So you can kind of cheese the pirate ghosts if you're really good at throwing. Uh, so throwing is a skill in this game. So you can get a bunch of spears and throw spears at them. Or you can get really good at, like, uh, bowmanship and firing arrows. And if you fight them from a range, they're not so bad. You can kind of cheese them out that way. But... Fighting a pirate ghost in melee without, like, full metal and without, like, really good gear is probably a bad idea. This game does have a banger soundtrack. Uh, this game actually has one of the most interesting soundtracks I've ever heard of, where it's, like, a mixture of, like, trap beats and, like, chip tunes, which I actually really like. It sounds great to my ear. It's one of those things that I'm like, ooh, this is a bopper. Like, you know that essence? You know the pause menu in N64 Goldeneye? And how gangster that music is, and it makes you want to be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, this game has that energy to it. And I don't know if I've ever seen another game that has that same energy. Uh, it looks like we're in a beach over here. Okay, we've hit the edge of the island. I'm going to have to, I haven't even explored my entire home island yet. This home island that I spawned on is just absolutely enormous. And so I've spent the better part of like six or seven hours just slowly going further on out and seeing what I can find. Yeah, this is Wayward. Uh, Wayward is a fantastic survival RPG that I wholeheartedly recommend to everybody. I only really have one complaint about it, and that's, it's not even like a complaint, it's just like an observation, I guess, about the reputation system. So it's not really even a complaint. So as I said earlier, I'm gonna talk about this for a second. The game has a reputation system. The island is sentient. If you do good things, the island is happy with you, like planting trees and eating natural foods. If you do bad things like killing animals or, you know, like cutting things up and not using all their body parts, your reputation will get negative. And there are thresholds 
where your luck goes up or your luck goes down and like bigger, badder monsters start spawning. Uh, when your reputation is up or down, it just kind of depends where you're at. And my observation about the reputation system is that one of the reasons that I find it's not entirely to my taste is because it incentivizes odd behaviors, like odd gamey behaviors in order to get around the reputation system. Uh, rather than it just kind of happen happening naturally and engaging with it, there's sort of this idea that in the game you're going to have to even out your reputation. And so you'll be like, I want to chop down a couple trees, but that's going to cost me like 2,000 reputation. So let me go craft like five fishing rods. And then with my five fishing rods, I'll just sit there and fish and throw everything back. And that'll give me a whole bunch of benevolent points. And then I can spend my benevolent points like a currency to go chop down some trees so that I can finish working on my house. Uh, the other one that felt kind of gamey to me is that one of the things that gives you positive points to your reputation is digging furrows like in a farm and then planting seeds. And so what you can do in this game is you can dig up the grass, you'll get grass seeds, you can then dig a furrow and replant the grass seeds from the grass that you just dug up in order to get reputation. And people do this all the time, like on the forums and whatnot, where you just walk in a line, digging up the grass and then putting it right back to where it goes. And it's kind of like this gamey idea of equivalent exchange in doing like cheesy motions in order to generate enough points to not go super negative. And on a certain level, you kind of have to, unless you're good at the game, because if you don't know the meta and you don't know how to get good armor and how to get good weapons and stuff like that, the monsters that will spawn at like worse reputations are, are pretty dangerous. And so like the point at which you can sort of stop caring about your reputation is when you know a lot about the game and you can just kind of play normally. But in the early game for a new player who hasn't picked up, you know, all those tips on like, how do I smell ore? Because I don't know how to do the fluxes and I don't know how to do the cases and all that kind of the casts and whatnot. It can be very troubling for a person that hasn't really learned the meta of the game and all the kind of underpinning surviving systems that make things go into flux and get easier and harder. So that's really, I think, my only complaint about it. Like, the, the reputation system is fine once you know how to play around it, but for your first couple runs where you have no idea how it works and what activities raise it and what activities lower it and what the thresholds are for nasty monster spawns and what the thresholds are for good luck and stuff like that, it takes a little while to wrap your head around and then memorize all the gamey strategies to kind of keep it high until you have good enough armor to not care anymore and it just torpedoes downwards and you never fix it again. Uh, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we were checking out one of my longtime favorites, uh, Wayward, which is a great little survival RPG. Fans of things like Unreal World, which I think is honestly a pretty limited community. Um, Unreal World is, even among niche roguelikes, Unreal World is a very niche game. Uh, but I think that this game is actually kind of a just casualized enough version of Unreal World that it ends up like, I always get bored in Unreal World. Like, I build a cabin, I build a sauna, I do some fishing, I chop down some trees, I pray to the gods, maybe I spear hunt a squirrel, I set up a snare line, and then I get bored. Uh, this game has all of those activities. You can do all of those similar things in this game except for the sauna but there's like a lot of combat on the in-between and there's like a focus on sort of like more fluidity of gameplay and things happening uh, to keep you engaged. And so I like the game a lot. I think it's great. I don't really have that many negative things to say about it. In fact, I, I think the only thing that I have that I'm not a big fan of, I already talked about on the video, but I still play the game regardless of, you know, that mechanic that I'm not a huge fan of. It's not that big of a deal. I still like the game a lot. I will see you all tomorrow. Thank you for stopping on in. If you want to get the game, it's down below in the description. But up until then, it's time for Splatty to go. Take care, everybody. I hope you have a good day. Thank you for the luxury of your time. And that's all I got for you. Bye, folks.